you're looking to lose some body fat and you decide to incorporate some cardio sessions to help you do it a little faster. So you walk into the gym looking for the machine that produces the best results, or you might even be thinking about buying a cardio machine for your house. In either case, you see all kinds of different pieces of cardio equipment to choose from. Treadmills, stair climbers, ellipticals, bikes, and rowing machines are just a couple of the options that you can choose from. So which one do you choose? Which one is best for burning fat? Well, that's what I'll help you answer in today's video. Let's start first with some science. Unfortunately, there's a very limited amount of research available when it comes to comparing different pieces of cardio machinery and the effect that they actually have on fat loss. And this is because for one, it's very difficult to attribute fat loss directly to cardio because cardio isn't the only thing that affects fat loss. Obviously your diet plays a huge role. Cardio gives you the ability to eat more food while still burning fat, but you can't actually burn all the fat you want just by dieting alone. There are also other factors like how active a person is throughout the day when they're not exercising or how fast their resting metabolism is. And these factors make it very difficult to set up a study that can show a direct relationship between cardio and the pounds lost on the scale. But what we do know is that if we can get our heart rate higher and keep it elevated for longer portions of our workout, we'll burn more calories per minute. So one study that was published in the Journal of American Medical Association, it compared six different cardio machines and the effects that they had on heart rate as well as the total calories burnt during the training session. In this study, they looked at the Airdyne bike, a cross country skiing simulator, a cycling bike, a rowing machine, a stair stepper, and a treadmill. On all the machines, the participants were asked to give an RPE, which stands for Ratings of Perceived Exertion. This basically involved rating the difficulty from 11 to 15, with 11 being fairly light, 13 being somewhat hard, and 15 being really hard. This was how they were able to establish a comparable intensity level between all these different machines. Once the intensity levels between all the machines was fixed and equal, the researchers found that the treadmill produced the highest heart rates and it had the highest rates of energy expenditure, meaning it burned the most amount of calories. The stair climber came in as a very close second, producing the second highest heart rates. The rowing machine and skiing machine were pretty much tied for third, followed by the cycling bike and the airdyne bike. When compared directly to cycling, the treadmill required 40% more energy expenditure than the bike at the same intensity level. 40% is definitely a significant difference. So does that mean that everyone should just spend all their time on the treadmill? The answer is no, because there are other factors at play here that make the best cardio machine for you a very individual and personal choice. So I've come up with five quick questions that you can ask yourself to find out which cardio machine is actually best for you. Number one and most important is which cardio machine do you actually enjoy doing? Or if you don't enjoy any of them, which one do you hate the least? This should be the very first question you ask yourself because even if you do burn more calories on the treadmill, but you hate doing it so much that you never use it, well, that's not gonna help you burn very much fat at all. If you enjoy your weekly cycling class so much that you never miss a single workout, but whenever you plan to go running outside, you find an excuse not to, then cycling is way better for you than using a treadmill. Consistency is a very important factor to consider when the goal is to get lean and stay lean. You wanna select a form of cardio that you'll actually be able to stick to for the long haul. And don't think inside the box for this one. You don't only have to select from the cardio machines that I already talked about. Swimming, boxing, and hiking are all perfect examples of cardiovascular activities that you actually might enjoy so much that they become effortless for you to stick to. The second question is, out of all the cardio machines you enjoy, which ones require you to stand up and which ones work the most muscles at the same time? The reason why you're asking this question is because when intensity levels are equal, the cardio machines that require you to stand up like treadmills and stair climbers will burn more calories than cardio machines that allow you to sit down, like cycling on a bike. Also, whenever you involve multiple joints and multiple muscle groups into a movement, you'll typically burn more calories from that movement. So when we compare the rowing machine to cycling, rowing will typically allow you to burn more calories when intensity levels are equal since you're using large upper body muscles like your back as well as your legs. Next, you'll wanna ask yourself whether you're looking to just burn fat from your cardio workout or if you also wanna stimulate some muscle growth as well. 
I constantly urge people to incorporate weight training into their workouts since building muscle is one of the most important things you can do to burn fat and keep it off. It's so important that I always say that you should prioritize weights before cardio for aesthetic purposes. The problem is that a lot of people, especially women, simply don't lift weights because they're afraid of getting bulky, which is by the way, a myth, or they don't do it because they just hate doing it. If you're not incorporating weights, you should try to go for a cardio machine that stimulates your heart as well as your muscles. The stair climber machine is a perfect example of this. Even though you won't be building the same amount of muscle for your legs that you would if you were doing something like barbell squats with a heavy weight load, the stair climber is one of the best cardio machines to also help you improve the muscles in your lower body. Using a treadmill at an inclined angle can help produce similar results and rowing and cycling at higher intensities and resistance levels can help you do this as well. Another question you'll wanna ask yourself is which machine is best for your joints? If you have bad knees and you choose to do the treadmill just because it can help you burn more calories, you may not be able to burn more calories for long enough to notice any changes to your body. What I mean is that there are certain cardio machines that are higher impact and others that are lower impact. If you have issues with your joints, you wanna choose lower impact activities like cycling and rowing because you'll be able to do them without having to take long periods of time off to let your joints recover. You also have to factor in the rest of your training. For example, if you work your legs twice a week with weights, it may not be the best idea to use a stair climber. The muscles in your legs will probably take longer to recover after using the stair climber when compared to something like the Airdyne bike. This could prevent you from performing at your best during your next cardio session and during your next leg workout. The last question I want you to ask is probably the second most important one right under which one you'll be able to do consistently. And that's which form of cardio are you able to handle at a higher intensity? Even though the research I brought up earlier tried to keep the intensity levels for all the machines the same, in real life, you're gonna be able to do certain cardio workouts at higher intensity levels than others. Don't be fooled into believing that there's a certain intensity level you wanna aim for to hit your target heart rate zone so that you could burn more fat. This is a myth. The higher the intensity level you can handle, the more calories and fat you'll burn. There will be certain machines and cardio workouts that you could perform at higher intensity levels. Now, you might be motivated to work as hard as you can on a boxing bag, but when you get to the stair climber, once you start feeling that burn in your legs, you may feel like giving up. Now, this doesn't only apply to the cardio machines, it also applies to your training style. There's long duration steady state cardio, like running on a treadmill for 30 minutes straight at one intensity level, like let's say five miles per hour. There's also high intensity interval training where you might be using the same treadmill, but instead of running five miles per hour for 30 minutes straight, you might sprint for 30 seconds at eight miles per hour and then switch to speed walking for 30 seconds at four miles per hour. High intensity interval training can burn significantly more calories than long duration steady state cardio simply because you wind up working at a much higher intensity level. This could allow you to burn the same amount of fat from a cardio workout in less time. If you're trying to spend less time at the gym and stimulate more muscle fibers, high intensity interval training is probably your best bet. If on the other hand, you don't feel like going all out for bursts of high intensity work, and you would instead prefer to jog or even walk at a moderate pace for a longer period of time, then you can do that as well. Remember, the very first question was, which form of cardio are you actually gonna stick to? I used to laugh when clients would tell me that they walked for their cardio workout, but now I know that's completely wrong and more discouraging than anything. The truth is that sprinting, jogging, and even walking can all burn the same amount of calories if you factor in time spent doing it. When sprinting, a 150 pound person will burn 20 calories per minute. When jogging, they'll burn 10. And when walking, they'll burn about five. This means that if that 150 pound person decided to sprint for a total of 10 minutes with low intensity breaks in between, of course, they'll burn about 200 to 250 calories. For someone that's very busy that wants to get in and out of the gym, a very intense 10 minute workout may sound much more preferable. On the other hand, if you can't stand that feeling of being completely out of breath and your heart racing really fast, then going on a longer walk can burn the same amount of calories. If that 150 pound person enjoys walking their dog and they can consistently commit to walking their dog at a moderate pace for 45 minutes per day, that'll be an extra 225 calories for them to do whatever they want with. 
Even though this is significantly more time than the 10 minutes spent on sprinting, I know a lot of my clients would stick to a longer duration walking program much better than a shorter sprinting program. And I have to repeat one more time, the number one thing to ask yourself when choosing a piece of cardio machinery is which one will you be able to stick to consistently? That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out. I wish there was a universal answer for everyone, but by asking these five questions, you'll be able to find the right answer specifically for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and if you're serious about burning fat, remember it's not only about burning more calories from your workout or from cardio, but it's much more important to have a proper diet plan in place. Even if you're doing a lot of cardio and burning a lot of extra calories, if you're not watching what you're eating, you can still be taking all those calories right back in. So on my website, I have a challenge that on average is helping my clients lose 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in just six weeks. The best part is that you can have the six week challenge for free as long as you're honest and willing to stick to the plan. We include a diet plan, a workout plan, and an accountability coach to guide you through the whole process. And the challenge makes you hold yourself accountable by having something on the line. You have something to lose. Most people fail diet plans because when the going gets rough, there's no incentive to stick it out. Our challenge is designed to tackle this very real psychological roadblock that many people run into. The fact that you have to earn the challenge by not cheating and not quitting makes people actually follow through on what they said they were gonna do from day one to day 42. And when you're consistent like that with this kind of a plan, I don't care who you are, you're gonna see some very incredible results. The challenge can be found by clicking the link below in the description, or you can just visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.